Back here with you on Inside the Vandals, former basketball coach John Newley, and he joins us now. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be here. All right, well, let's start off looking back at that game against Grand Canyon, a 58-54 to heart thumper over them. Did it surprise you that that game ended up being so close? No, not really. I knew uh, Grand Canyon had a lot of talent. Um, they've played teams like UCLA. They lost by two. Uh, they were 13-4 and four coming in overall um, for a reason. You know, they're extremely well coached. A lot of talent, a lot of uh, transfers in from other places, notably that uh, point guard from Gonzaga. And, uh, you know, they're just a talented team, and I knew we'd have our hands full. I got to ask you, how nervous do you get in games like that? Uh, I get nervous, you know. Um, I'm also confident. I, th I feel like our team can handle close games. Uh, I feel like they execute very well down the stretch. We, For as young as we are, we've had a lot of close games the last couple yeah. years, and uh, you had a lot of experience in them, and I think there's no... Uh, there's you know, no substitute for that kind of experience. How big was, was Addie Skibo in that game? I mean, not only did she hit that three to tie things at 54, but you mentioned a huge defensive rotation that she got over, prevented an open three look from them. Yeah, I thought Addie played probably her best all-around game. I told her that at practice after the game. I, I thought she, she did everything defensively and that, what you're talking about at the end of the game, and she rotated out to that guard who would have had a wide open three stopped the three, then went back to her own player and stopped that three, you know, all on the same couple of passes. Uh, it was just sheer hustle, smartness of, of being where she needed to be, and then, of course, uh, hitting the big three. Yeah, that, w that three was huge. Now, obviously a bit of a rough first half shooting the ball, seven for 34. How do you approach that with your team after the game? Is that something you try and fix, or you just say, hey, we had an off, we had an off first half, let's move on? Well, we talked about it at halftime, you know, that we couldn't shoot any worse. So we needed to just relax and, uh, you know, keep taking the shots because I thought we had decent looks. I mean, we missed layup. You look at the start of the game, it's three missed layups, a turnover, and another missed layup to start the game, which is a bad way to start. Um, so we talked at halftime about fixing that up, finishing at the rim. And, uh, you know, I thought we did a better job in the second half. But what we'll do is we'll come back, and we took a lot of shots uh, on Saturday, and we will continue to take a lot of shots this week. Now, another great defensive effort uh, on your guys' part. Does it ease your mind knowing that, you know, if you have the inevitable off-shooting night, your defense is good enough that it can keep you in the game? Oh, it's huge. You know, we're, I know we're not going to shoot 57%, you know, from three-point range uh, every game like we did on the road trip. And, you know, we have to be able to really dig in, rebound, defend people like we did. And against a great team, really, like Grand Canyon, to be able to beat them with the way we shot, uh, she knows a lot of our defense, and our defense is ready to go. Jordan Green did a great job of getting the game plan in defensively for them, and I thought our, our players really executed well. Now, you mentioned after the game that coming home with a 6-0 record that maybe there was a little bit of pressure that played into it. You know, what kind of pressure from wanting to play just well for the home fans, or was it more the 6-0 record, now 7-0? I think it was both, the combination. Um, I think when our players get here, they really want to play well, uh, especially when we have a decent crowd like we had. Yeah. You know, we want to keep winning. I think they feel the pressure. If we win, more people will come because for whatever reason, we're not drawing as well as we should be. You know, our support level needs yeah. to get a lot better, and I'm needs not sure to. why it's not because we're winning, and, and you would think they would be here. So, you know, that would be nice if we could, But and I think our players put that pressure on themselves to perform and to be almost perfect at home instead of just playing basketball like they do on the road. How do you address that with your team? How do you address the pressure? What do you say to them to try and ease their minds? Well, I told them, hey, this, we're not even through the first round yet. You know, uh, Seattle game is our last game of the first round. There's a lot of basketball to be played. Yeah. You know, we still have a whole other round to play. I said, so it's great we're where we're at, but we just need to really literally go one game at a time and not think about the big picture of, of being undefeated and all the rest of that stuff. Now, you guys are 7-0 and now in WAC play. Are the expectations for you guys, would you say they're higher now than they were seven games ago when you started conference? I think they're higher for other people outside the program. I mean, for us inside the program, this is where we, we expected to be. It's where, we, you know, where, where our expectations are to be leading the WAC after the first round and, and where we're at. So uh, we can't put any more pressure on ourselves, but certainly people on the outside will keep putting more pressure on when they see the record, when they did it, you know. And like I told our players, hey, Seattle is still a team picked to win. Yeah. You know, they're still picked to win, and they destroyed Grand Canyon, uh, <clears throat> you know, yesterday or uh, Saturday when they, when they played. So, um, you know, it's still on them. I think it's still on Seattle uh, to try to repeat as the WAC regular season champions, and we're just trying to climb that ladder. You lead in perfectly to my next round of questions, talking about the game coming up against Seattle U. 
Does this matchup mean any more than the typical game, considering who you're playing? I don't think it means any more to me. It, it's a, it's the last game of the first round, you know, and uh, we need to go out and play well. I think our players, we've developed a rivalry with Seattle somewhat after the three games last year. You know, the two really close games here and there, and then uh, beating them for the WAC championship in Vegas. So I think they're going to feel that extra, you know, motivation as as well as Seattle will. I'm sure it will be an extremely physical basketball game out there, and uh, we got to be ready to play. I noticed that Seattle U has some kind of promotion going on for the game against you guys, so they're they're looking to pack it out. I'm sure yeah. now. How does this year's Seattle U team compare to last year? Are they up? Are they down? Kind of the same? What would you say? I think they're a little better than they were last year. I think their their other big kid, Taylor Ross, is playing at a high level now to go along with Sal, you know, the player of the year last year in the WAC, their big 6'3 post kid. Um, they have Shepard back, first team all WAC, Ward uh, all WAC player. So they have their, their three seniors this year were all WAC players, you know, we're all first team WAC players and the player of the year in Sal. So they have everything. They have a couple of really good guards that they've added. Um, like I said, it would go along with Ross. So they're loaded, man. You know, there's a lot of talent out there. I think they're better than they were last year. So we're going to have to be better. Now, when you guys played them last year, they had a, they did a lot of full court pressure, trying to force a lot of turnovers. Do you expect the same kind of game plan from them this year? Yeah, that's their game plan. They're going to they're going to be pressing us. They're going to be trapping in the half court, changing up defenses, looking for steals. You know, they love to get steals, go down, get easy baskets. They'll be trying to uh, pummel us inside. You know, with Sal and and now Ross, uh, our bigs are going to have to be ready to defend and be physical inside. And we're going to have to be able to get back defensively because they they love to fly down the floor, man. And they will uh, they will get to the rim any way possible. Now you mentioned a bit of a rivalry has developed between you guys and and players talk about Seattle U. Your players, you know, they they want to beat Seattle U. Is there any is there any special preparation that goes into this game almost trying to keep them from getting from getting too excited, too hyped? Is that possible? I am not sure that's possible, you know, especially with Allie and Alyssa both being from the Seattle area. No. So when we go back home for them, they're home to play. You know they're sky high anyway, and you know gonna have to try to bring them down a notch. I think just so they don't get too out of control. Uh, you know, foul wise or doing things, trying to play outside of what they're what they're capable of. So well, I'll talk to those two guys. I think everybody else will be uh, be all right, ready to go. Totally. And uh, finally, coach, you know next season you won't be seeing them twice a year as you guys move into the Big Sky to join that conference. Uh, will you miss this matchup at all? This rivalry, or is it just kind of water under the bridge? Uh, you know, you, you play who you, who you play, man, who they tell you to play. But, you know, I like the rivalry. I like going over to Seattle. You know, we do a lot of recruiting in that area. I think it's a great game for our players from there to go home and play. So we'll try to get games over there, whether it's Seattle or UW or, or somebody over there if we can, uh, to keep it going over in the Northwest. Totally. Well, he's Coach John Newley. Coach, good luck against Seattle U this weekend, and thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. Now, up next, we have Michaela Dirks, who caught up with Idaho guard Connie Ballastero, right after this past Thursday's win over Grand Canyon. I'm here with sophomore guard Connie Ballastero. Connie, can you tell us, you know, this last game was a real na nail biter. How did you guys pull this one through tonight? Um, I think we just kept our composure and we stayed calm and in the end we came out with the win, so that was nice. <laughs> and this last game makes it 7-0 and in conference play. What is the secret? Do you have a pair of socks that you wear or a beginning of the game ritual? How do you guys do this? Well, we are superstitious. Like um, A couple of us wore our new shoes for the first time this game and at halftime we all changed them because we weren't playing that great. And then we won in the end, so that might be it. <laughs> so you think that might actually have something to do with the win? I do. <laughs> All right, well, what is your favorite part about being uh, on the Vandal basketball team? Um, I love my teammates and my coaches. They're like family to me. Uh, they treat me good. They support me. They're always there for me. All right, well, in for Inside the Vandals, I'm Michaela Dirks. Hey, thanks, Michaela. Wow, an exciting game there. And talking about the lucky shoes, I'm glad that that worked. I got to say, though, I don't think there's any shoes that could help my game. I, I'm, it's not I good. Have, I have some lucky slippers that I wear every time the Seahawks are playing on TV. So maybe that works for the Seattle Seahawks. Well, hopefully the luck continues for the women and hopefully the men can pick up some wins. You know, make sure to join us next week here on Inside the Vandals. We'll be breaking down those Seattle U games. It's going to be good. Nice little rivalry between Idaho and Seattle U. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week when Inside the Idaho Vandals returns.